Hey there, um, yeah, so welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Emily and for this video I decided to make this layered berry keto cake. It's actually a cake I made for my mom on Mother's Day um, and it was just so tasty that, you know, I thought I should probably show you how to make it. And uh, I tried it multiple times to try and perfect the recipe. So I'm really proud of the way that it turned out. I hope you like it. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start things off, these are all the ingredients you'll need in order to make the batter. I'll have a full ingredients list, their measurements, and a full recipe in the description box down below. So please feel free to check it out. Start by preheating your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or an equivalent to 165 degrees Celsius. Cream your butter and your sugar to make for a very light cake. Now here's a little hack. I like to separate the butter or cut it into cubes to make it a lot easier to work with and eventually it's going to be a lot easier to blend with your sugar. Crack 5 eggs into a separate bowl and then blend them into the creamed butter sugar mixture one by one until you've got a uniform consistency. Add in your non-dairy milk, your almond or vanilla extract, give it a nice mix and set it aside. Next you'll need to sift through your coconut and almond flour. If you find any like bigger grinds, that's alright, just throw them right in. Add in your salt and baking soda, and then you can set your dry ingredients aside. Grease two 9 inch circular baking pans with either butter or coconut oil. Then cut out and grease two 9 inch circles from parchment paper and place them at the bottom of your baking pan. Then you'll need to mix small amounts of your dry ingredients into your wet ingredients. Then split the batter equally into two parts, each one in their own corresponding baking pan. Place them in the oven and let the cakes cook for 25 minutes. These are all the ingredients you'll need for the icing. All ingredients, measurements, and directions will be listed in the description box down below. So again, please feel free to check it out. Then, with a coffee grinder, grind your sweetener into a powder and add the powder half at a time to a half a cup of whipped cream. Add your ricotta cheese, flavored extract, and then your cream cheese. Beat the mixture until you've got a thick consistency, and you can also throw in some coconut flakes to help thicken the icing. Place it in the fridge for around 25 minutes while we finish up by making the jam filling. 
set the small saucepan on high heat and add your blueberries and raspberries. Once the mix boils, drop the heat to low and let it simmer until you're able to mash up the berries with a fork. Then remove them from the heat completely and add in your sweetener and xanthan gum. Mix it and set it aside for 25 minutes. Take your whipped cream from the fridge and whip it until you've got a spreadable consistency. Finally, it's time to decorate. This can be done any which way you like, but if you want to follow the way that I'm doing it, I'm layering my cake as cake, icing, jam, cake, icing. And then I'm also going to be using some of the scrap leftover jam to create like a lovely uh, marble effect. Sprinkle on some raspberries, blueberries, some coconut flakes, and place in the fridge for about a half an hour. And there you are, beautiful, delicious, and ready to eat. So that was my take on the keto berry layered cake. Personally, I really like this recipe because it's just so light, it's so sweet, and it's really, it's a colder cake. We put it in the fridge for about a half an hour before serving it. So it's really great for, especially now that we're having a lot of heat spells, it's just a really nice treat. So basically on a side note, for anyone who hasn't really come across the keto diet, it's basically one where we're trying to limit the amount of carbs that we're taking in on a daily basis just to prevent our insulin from uh, spiking throughout the day. So you're basically reducing majority of your sugar, your white flour, and we're replacing it with fat. And honestly, like, 
it's so crazy how much sugar we don't even realize is in the products that we're getting and that's one thing that i really like about the keto diet it allows you to be more um more conscious of the sugar that we're taking in because we all kind of know that sugar is not good for us and there's a lot of health issues that relate to sugar so when we're like taking it out of our diet and we're replacing it with other things it's a lot better especially if we have the opportunity to so um, that's just one example of something that I've personally learned and I really like um, and why I really liked going on the ketogenic diet I'm no longer on it anymore um, I can go into a video if you guys want to find out why I switched from vegan to keto and then from keto to I guess regular diet eating meat and, and everything else, just leave it in the comments down below and I might do a video on that. I probably will actually, um, but yeah, if you guys want that in the near future, like the nearer future, um, just let me know. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that um, for anyone who's really interested in the keto diet um, or even just learning about the principles and learning about different foods that you can uh, replace like regular sugar with, so for example, in this cake, you might say like, hey, there's sugar in here, what's what's up with this? Well, it's actually not, it's actually a sweetener. So your insulin doesn't spike as much when you have monk fruit sweetener. Um, I got it, uh, the sugar is actually discontinued, I think, at Costco. There's a lot of people been asking about it though, so hopefully they'll bring it back, like fingers crossed. But, uh, but yeah, so you should be able to get it at health food stores. Um, and also, um, I also wanted to mention some of the uh, substitutions that I think would taste really good. So for example, what I did actually in this recipe, and I didn't mention it before, but I ran out of almond extract. So what I did was I actually used, uh, I didn't use vanilla extract, I used lemon extract. And I find it kind of created like a really cool raspberry lemon like a raspberry lemonade kind of flavor it's actually really good I like it but I would definitely recommend if it's, your, if it's your first time trying it definitely with the almond extract or the vanilla extract would be really great um, and if you want to try something new you've tried it already or whatever uh, definitely try the the raspberry lemonade uh, flavor yeah so thank you so much for watching bye